Hello my friends, this is Sylvie Curry, Lady of Q. This weekend we're headed to another competition. This is the first of the year for me. We're all set up, got the camper and the trailer hooked up. All shiny and bright. Nothing left now but to head on out. And I am at a competition and I'm getting ready to prepare my pork. This competition is the first of the year for me. Here we are at Lake Achuma in Santa Inez, California. The name of the con competition is the Golden State Battle. And we've got 48, 47, 48 teams here. So let me show you what I do in prepping my already trimmed meat. For this competition, I'm going to be doing five pork butts. That's a little, one more than I usually do. Usually I do four. The reason why I chose to do five this time is because I had a hard time finding a pork butt that when I looked at it, it said perfection. So I'm going to cook more up. In addition, one of the other reasons for doing this is we're going to have a Super Bowl party and I wanted to have meat for that party. So five pork butts. I'm not going to go through all five of them with you here. I'm only going to go through and show you my technique for doing one of them. And then later on, I'll show you what they all look like. I'm going to move this one here because that's the one that I want to highlight. You always have paper towels handy for wiping. I have my injections and I use different products here and there. Sometimes I'll use Big Papa Smokers pork prod, which you can mix with water or fruit juices. Fruit juices like apple juice are white grape, um, white grape juice. And I have enough to inject five butts here. Then I have two rubs. One of them, this one here is Big Papa Smoker's Sweet Money. And the second rub I use is Simply Marvelous's Genie, Genie's Trinity. And those are the only two rubs that I use. I have a cup available and I have my syringe. I don't have a fancy syringe that I use because I find that this one works quite well. So let's get this puppy rolling. I'm going to put in about a little less than a cup of injection per butt. Sometimes you get butts that are they don't take much moisture and sometimes you get get them which just drink and drink and drink. Anyway, the way that I trim my meat is to emphasize that I do cook hot and fast. So therefore, I want to cut down the meat as much as possible. I know some people cut theirs down to like four pounds. I like mine to be in about four and a half to five pound range. This one I've cut down to about five pounds. The three sections include the money muffle, the money muscle which I've cut out or trimmed around. Then we have a midsection in here and I cut out most of the that. And sometimes underneath this section in here there are tubes. And then we have the bone side and the horn meat. So those are the three sections that we emphasize. In injecting what I'm going to do is I'm going to first inject my money muscle and I inject Pushing in and pulling out. Pushing in and pulling out. In and out. You have to watch because it will squirt on you. And then I just go to all the next sections. The injection in this area is meant to get that horn meat. And then I don't pay, pay much attention to this section. Then I I said horn meat. This injection in this section is meant to get the uh, the tubes. The horn meat is here, and I'll inject. And I know some people go in and do all sorts of patterns and things like that. I don't like to do that because sometimes it tears up the meat. And when I go to pick it, I don't want it all showing. Um, I don't want it to show a bunch of the injection sites all around it. So. We'll go and inject it. 
And the section down here in the bottom, I try to get. And on the sides. Then I do turn my pork butt over and I do inject this section here because there's underneath this fat there's another layer of of pork which is like a I'll call it like a bacon because it has the striations like the bacon meat and I'll try to inject that because sometimes I'm able to use it sometimes not and this pork butt actually has a lot of the fat cat removed by the butcher and so what you can do with that is if you have fat from another area if you just put it on top of it and that'll protect that bacon meat right there that's injecting a pork butt and the next step from here would be to season it. I'm going to finish doing all these other pork butts and I'll come back to you when I get ready to season them. I've got all of my pork butts injected. Now I'm getting ready to season them. And in seasoning them, I use these two rubs, Jeannie's Trinity by Simply Marvelous, and I also use Sweet Money from Big Papa Smokers. Because I cook fat cap up, I often will first season the bottom part of the pork butts, as you see laid out here. Then I'll put them back in the pan, flipped over with the fat cap showing, and season that section of it. I like to start with the Genie's Trinity, because that imparts color. And I like the color that it gives it. It's a combination of rubs, pecan, and sweet seduction, peach, and honey. And I do do a generous rub of it. We often say rub, but I don't rub it on, I pat it. In competition, a lot of rub is wasted, as you see. It falls over to the side, but that's okay. We'll get all of these done. Then I'll put them in their pans, cover them with foil, refrigerate them. And then when I get ready to cook them in the morning, and I do cook hot and fast, I'll take them out, and they will have had all night to brine in this rubs. Also, when you're putting on your rubs, make sure you try to make it even. And don't forget the sides. Now I have a number of different sizes of pork butts here, so the timing as far as when they'll be done is going to vary quite a bit. What I try to do is put the larger ones on the rack this hottest in my smoker. The other thing, you're probably wondering, what is, why does she have a glove on that? The purpose of the glove is to protect the container so that after I finish seasoning, my containers won't be dirty and I'll just pull the gloves off. The other thing that's very important, and you didn't see me do the step, but when I use my rubs, I shake them up trying to make sure that I get them even because some of the bigger flakes tend to go to the top and I want an even distribution throughout the bottle of all the rub, of all the particles that are in the rub. I'm going to finish these and I'll come back when I'm working on the fat cap side. I have all my pork butts now laid out in the pans and I do cook in the pans and the primary reason for that is it makes for a 
cleaner smoker and a lot of the juice is in there for the pork to be swishing around and keeps it moist. So I've got, once again, I'll start with my Trinity and I only need to do the top because I've already seasoned the sides. So we'll put a coating on the fat cap side and making sure that we get that money muscle done. And why do they call it the money muscle? They call it the money muscle because it's what if it's cooked correctly, it's a very tender piece of meat and in competitions, you win, thus you get money. But since everybody's turning into money muscle, the most important thing about it is that it has to be cooked properly, tender. In cooking any kind of meat, things that are important are your rubs, your sauce, and things like that. However, the most important thing is that you cook it right, cook it to the correct tenderness, and have flavor. So I'm getting that trinity on the fat cap side. Then I'll go to my sweet money. Now I'll put that also on the fat cap side. Once again, making sure that I'm getting my money muscle coated. And then we'll cover these babies, put them in the refrigerator, let them get drenched in those seasonings. And the next step will be tomorrow morning when we get ready to put them on the smoker. And now we're getting ready to do our chicken. I have the chicken, which has been in a brine for about four hours. It was previously trimmed, and I have a video on how to trim chicken, and it was trimmed to those specifications. The solution that I use to brine is a product called Chicken Prod. And we're going to take the chicken out of the brine and let it drip on paper towels. And a lot of what I do in my setup is for easy cleanup. I have plastic trash bags underneath the counter to protect the counter. And then I have the paper towels to absorb the solution. I'm going to take this solution that I've been brining in and I'm going to actually put it through a filter. And the reason for that is I am also going to inject the chicken with the solution. Let's see if I can do this with causing a mess. Let's do it like that. And what that's going to do is going to catch some of the little chicken pieces in there and some of the larger pieces of product that's in that chicken prod. And that's like little bits of pepper, little onion pieces. So that when I put it, draw it up in my syringe, it won't clog the syringe. We'll put this to the side. I'll take paper towels and I'll just sort of dry it a little bit on the top. Then I'm going to turn them over. And I always try to have them in the same direction where that bone is in one direction. No particular reason, just the way I do it. Okay, then we're going to take our syringe and needle, and I'm going to draw up. And it doesn't take very much per chicken thumb. Usually only about, this is a 5 ml syringe. So you inject and pull as you go across. 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 
And the part of the chicken that I'm actually injecting are the sides. And that's where the judges bite. Pull, go across, pull, go across. Sometimes I also do close to the bone, but that tends to just run off. I'll do that just to show you uh, that process. Once again, we have inject and pull back, inject and pull back. I try to go in a certain order so I don't forget to inject something or sometimes I wind up double injecting some of them. Inject and pull back. Inject. If you watch my video on trimming chicken, you'll see that it's an elaborate process meant to make all the chicken thighs of uniform shape and weight. I weigh them. And my weights usually vary between about five ounces. Check the full back. I usually do only 12 thighs, turn in six. And there we have our injection. The next step, after I've done the tenderizing of the sides, is I'm gonna use my Genie's Trinity on one side and I'll let it sweat and I'll let it sweat till it looks like it's melted and then I'll turn it over and show you the second part of the process. So we just do a coating on the back. And then we'll let it sweat. And I'll come back and show you what it looks like once it's wet enough. The rub has been on the chicken thighs. It's been about 15 minutes. The temperature here in my trailer is approximately 81 degrees, so it got there pretty quick. The next step is to get the seasoning on the second side or the skin side. And this process just means to straighten up the skin on the outer port part of the chicken, shape the chicken in a way that I want it to go into my pan, and then I put a light coating of rub on that chicken thigh, and I take it and I put it in my tins, and I shape it. So that it looks uniform all around, little rectangle. And that's it. Let's do another one. Even out the skin on the chicken. Form it into a uniform shape in your hands. Take the seasoning, do a coating of it on all sides. Grab it by the bone and take it and put it in the tray. It's a muffin tin, an eight compartment muffin tin, and shape it. And voila, let's do another. The important thing is to get them uniform and to make sure the coating is fairly even all around. The hardest part is actually 
getting it in the muffin tin evenly. And I use this little end of a little cocktail for it to do that. Any type of utensil that's a flat surface like that would work. Okay. If there are little pieces of the chicken that shouldn't be there, remove them. Fold it under, shape it. And then take your rub and do a dusting all over. Back in the muffin, muffin pan. Sometimes it goes in really even. Sometimes you have to use this little utensil to shape it better. You see little. Sometimes you have to put a little bit more seasoning to coat. And I put six in each pan. I have two pans. Uh, sometimes you see an end of the chicken that isn't going to go, isn't going to incorporate. I'll cut that off, even it up. with our season. I'll do one more. next step is I put it in the refrigerator uncovered overnight and then tomorrow I start another process in getting our chicken ready for this barbecue pump. Okay I'm up early in the morning got up at 5 to get my smoker ready for the day cook it hot and fast I bumped it up to 350 overnight it was running at 2 10 to 2.15 just to get it warm so it would take less time this morning to get it up to temp. I've got six racks of ribs, St. Louis cut, trimmed, and I'm going to season them this morning. And I only season them approximately an hour to an hour and a half before I put them on the smoker. I find that if you season them any time earlier, you may get a hammy type taste. The salt reacts and it's not the result that you may want. This is the front side up. Start the seasoning. I'm going to turn them all over and do the back side first. I'll season that and let it set for about oh, 20 30 minutes. And then I'll turn it over and do the front side. I'm using two rubs, one being the Simply Marvelous Genie's Trinity and also Big Papa Smoker's Sweet Money. I start out with using the Trinity and I put a coating on the back side 
And some people do it higher, some people do it lower. For the back side, it doesn't matter. You just don't want it too thick because you don't want it to get gummy. I'm almost through with this container wise. Go to a new bottle. We'll go over those. And I'll go with the sweet money. It's a cold morning. Temperature out here is, well, here in the trailer, it's 46 degrees. So it's pretty cold. So we'll get this going, and when I come back and do the other side, I'll bring you back. My ribs have been sweating on the back side for about 25 minutes, and I'm ready to turn them over and get them seasoned on the front side. To do this, I have my little pans oil and I put two layers on it and I'm going to then put my ribs on the foil pan seasoning the, the front. And I start off with the Trinity. And you try to get a layer not too thick because you don't want it to be gummy. But you do want to have enough coverage so you get your seasonings in there. Covered. You do need to pay attention to these end pieces because those are your tasters. And you don't want to taste the end piece and not get an idea of what the ribs that you're going to turn in actually taste like. You just feel in where you feel like there's rub is missing. And I give a coating of my sweet money. And we sit and let these sweat for about another 25-30 minutes and then we'll get them on the smoker. The ribs have been sweating for about a half an hour 
and they're ready to, almost ready to go on the smoker. I do cook my ribs hanging and I use these little hangers to do it with. So I'll go into the large part of the ribs, or the thicker part, and go through and put my little rib hangers on. up the little section where I touched it and we're good to go. Here we are at the Lake Kachuma camping sites. This is the full hookup RV section where we were privileged to be able to hang out from Thursday until this morning. Comp is over. Uh, it was a very very good time. I am happy to say that I wound up with the Grand Championship. Yes, Lady of Q, number one out of 48 teams. Very surprised, uh, and but very, very happy. A lot of the teams have already pulled out and have left. Over the past three days, this place was packed with smokers going and competitors doing their thing.